We welcome you to this service of reading and song at Home Ravian Church. This Holy Week tradition of gathering to read the story of Christ's passion is a cherished time in the Moravian Church. It draws us closer together as we all become, once again, part of this story. Where are you in the story tonight? We invite your reflection and prayer. We thank Brother Ted Lineback and Sister Margaret Lineback for reading and singing tonight. And we will begin our reading about halfway through Tuesday with the widow's offering in the small brown book. It's on page 33. And if you have a different edition, you'll find the corresponding page numbers in the margins of that edition. So let us stand now for him. 666, help us, O Lord, to learn, and we will remain standing for prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the story into which we gather tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to learn your truth by living into that story. While we remain separated physically tonight, draw us together in spirit with one another and with you. Amen.
Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Jesus, what offering shall I give to you, the Lord of earth and skies? My soul and body now receive the holy living sacrifice, small as it is, it's all my store. More should you have if I had more. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. Although he had performed so many signs in their presence, they did not believe him. This was to fulfill the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Lord, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And so they could not believe, because Isaiah also said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, so that they might not look with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw his glory and spoke about him. Nevertheless, many, even the authorities, believed in Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess it for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue, and they loved human glory more than the glory that comes from God. If Christ is mine, let friends forsake and earthly comforts flee. For he, the giver of all good, is more than all to me. Then Jesus cried aloud, Whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. On the last day, the word that I have spoken will serve as judge. For I have not spoken on my own, But the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. Hark, my soul, it is the Lord. He's Savior, hear his word. Jesus speaks and speaks to you. My poor sinner, love me true. As Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Then he asked them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I tell you, not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, 
Beware that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved, and this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Church, rejoice, raise your voice, sing Jehovah's worthy praise, extol his name forever, laud him our God and Savior, proclaim to every nation the tidings of salvation. to his greatness spread the story of his glory to the earth's remotest bounds so when you see the desolating sacrilege standing in the holy place as was spoken by the prophet Daniel then those in Judea must flee to the mountains the one on the housetop must not go down to take what is in the house. The one in the field must not turn back to get a coat. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath, for at that time there will be great suffering such has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no one would be saved, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after suffering of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven 
and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the, son, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. For the fig tree, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be, two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Lord, for your coming us prepare, may we to meet you without fear, at all times ready be. In faith and love preserve us sound, O oh, let us day and night be found, waiting with joy your face to see. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. servants of the Lord, each in your office wait, observant of his heavenly word, and watchful at his gate. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what port of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who then is the faithful and wise slave whom his master has put in charge of his household to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to himself, my master is delayed 
and he begins to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with the drunkards, the master of the slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and in an hour that he does not know. He will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of, our, some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The watchers on the mountain proclaim the bridegroom near. Go forth as he approaches with alleluia's clear. The marriage feast is waiting, the gates wide open stand. Arise, O heirs of glory, the For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of the slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. 
enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Help us, O God, to use our gifts in service day by day, that what you give us we may share and work as well as pray. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then all the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Across the crowded ways of life, where sound the cries of race and clan, above the noise of selfish strife, we hear your voice, O oh Son. Multitudes to view. 
When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and confirmed with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus to them when no crowd was present. O Lamb of God, still keep me near to your wounded side. Tis only safety and peace I can abide. What falls and snares surround me? What doubts and fears within? The grace that sought and found me May Christ, the Lamb of God, keep you close to his wounded side. May you find peace and safety there this evening. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.